now we know how to get your potential customer quickly, uh, how to find your supplier in China. Uh, then the question, the problem coming, uh, how to find a reliable logistic service. So let's, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the Anik from the Canada Post to make the presentation. Welcome. Excellent. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm really excited to be here today on behalf of Canada Post. Um, as we continue to support the industry to grow e-commerce uh, in Canada and also globally. Um, Today I will, be, I will be sharing some insight about e-commerce and I will also touch on important points in regards to uh, customs, duties, postal clearance, all exciting stuff before lunch. So uh, when I was at the booth this morning, I had a lot of people coming to see me and asking me why Canada Post was here today. It seems that some people are surprised that we actually do ship internationally. In fact, we have more than one million letters and parcels going to China every year. Uh, we are the leader in Canada in terms of parcel delivery, but we are working with all postal institutions across the world to deliver parcels. So we do help small and large company to ship uh, cross-border and uh, I'll talk a little bit later the difference between postal clearance and commercial clearance. We have actually six flights leaving um, every week from Montreal, Toronto and Vancouver which are our main exchange offices. Um, I don't think anybody here would be surprised to see those numbers. Uh, we are talking about a projected $1 trillion by 2020, and yes, I said T, trillion with a T, um, around the global B2C cross-border e-commerce sales, uh, which is quite significantly in increase compared to um, $230 billion in 2014. Um, if we look more specifically for China, we are talking two times more cross-border shoppers in China than the entire Canadian population, with approximately 69 million cross-border buyers in 2015, spending a total of nine, $90 billion online. So uh, if you were wondering if it's a, a good market to target, uh, definitely there's a lot of cross-border potential buyers that are uh, in that market. So you might be wondering what are they buying and is uh, your business the right fit for the kind of products they're looking for? Uh, so the study shows that 42% uh, is cosmetics and health and beauty products, 36% clothing, accessories, footwears, and 35% for food, grocery, delicacies. Uh, and the reason those customers are buying online is 35% for better product availability, 27% for appealing offer, and uh, also better condition in terms of uh, service uh, and payment terms. So, are you making the most of your opportunity for e-commerce in China? And before you start shipping to China, there are some important information to know about in terms of restrictions and prohibited, prohibited uh, products. So this is a list, uh, it's not the complete list, but it's always important to first do your research and understand what are the restrictions around your products, if there's more information that are required, and if you need uh, to do some more uh, documentation and have some kind of approvals before shipping uh, to China. And we have a full list on our website, and that applies to all countries because it might also vary depending in which countries you are shipping to. Now, um, I hope you're all awake still because uh, that needs a little bit of concentration. So basically, I'll try to make it simple. There are three kind of taxes that can apply for shipments going to China. Uh, we are <laughs> lucky them. We are looking at custom and duties, 
uh, the VAT, which is the value-added uh, tax, and also the consumption tax, uh, which apply for more luxuries items like cosmetics and golf clubs and uh, jewelries. So basically, just like in, for the one who are shipping today in the States, you have a limit of $800 before taxes and duties can apply on the shipments. Uh, in China, the equivalent is 2,000 um, in Chinese currency, which is 300, the equivalent of $390 in Canadian dollar. So less than $390 per shipment, there's no duties and taxes that applies, um, but there is 70% of the VAT and the uh, consumption tax. They just started a new rule, it started in April, where there's also a limit on how much an individual can buy cross-border per year. Um, so basically, if you're an active shopper like I am online and you buy a lot online, they are going to monitor how much you're buying outside of China, and if you reach the equivalent of $3,900 Canadian dollar per year, then even if the item that you're buying is less than $50, you're still going to pay 100% of custom duties and 100% of the VAT and 100% of the consumption tax if it's applicable. Uh, so there are um, some rules there that will limit how much people can order, um, but without paying taxes and duties. Now, I was talking about postal clearance, and I just want to explain the difference between postal clearance and commercial clearance. So as the word says it, it is for postal institution. And the main difference between postal uh, clearance and commercial clearance is how the information is provided to custom. So in the postal world, there are no brokers. Uh, all the information is directly on the parcels. Uh, all the custom information appear on the part or shipping label. So there's no electronically transmitted information to custom prior of the parcel arriving in the foreign country. Um, in the case of commercial clearance, all the information is sent ahead of time, and if the custom agent want to see the parcel, they will ask the carrier to uh, show them the, the parcel once it's arriving on, in that different country. In the postal world, the information is on the label, the parcel is given to the foreign country, it goes in front of a custom agent, so it's on a conveyor and the custom agent look at the information directly on the parcels. The good thing is that there's a little bit less information that is required in the postal world, and the main reason is that there's a lot of individuals sending gifts, uh, sending uh, things to their families that wouldn't have all the knowledge to create a real commercial invoice. Uh, so if we're talking about the harmonized code and the VAT numbers, those are not required in the postal world. So it makes it a little bit easier for starting company who don't have all the information about their products to start shipping internationally. Uh, you still need a description of the product, the country of origin, uh, the description of the goods in order to, in in order to ship a shipment. So, in terms of products that you can use, uh, we do have Priority Worldwide. This is our only commercial clearance products as we are leveraging uh, FedEx to uh, ship that product. Um, the other services, we have Express Post International, which goes in 52 countries. You have Track Packet International, and I'm really excited to say today that it's coming soon for China. So right now it's serving 20 countries. Uh, we are uh, signing the document to ship to China also. 
Uh, the difference between a, an Express Post International and a Track Packet International is Express Post would include signature and full tracking. It goes in the EMS system, where the Track Packet International does not include signature, but it's for lighter items. So the first weight break starts at 250 grams, uh, then goes to 500 grams, one kilogram, and it's up to two kilograms. So it adds a lot of value uh, in for lighter and less expensive shipments where you don't need the full-on signature. Uh, if your product are really not expensive and again under the two kilogram, we do have what we call small packet and that's for no tracking. It's really like regular mail. There's no tracking, there's no um, information that is transmitted to your customers, but that's really the cheapest way to ship internationally and that's offered in all uh, the countries. In order to help promote the growth of e-commerce. The minimum requirement to be a commercial customer for um, those products is 100 shipments uh, per year. So it's really uh, low in order to be a commercial customer for international shipments. In terms of the delivery experience, uh, what you can see is two thirds of the shipments will be delivered within six days and as little as four days uh, with Express Post International to go in China. So it's a really good transit time uh, in terms of reaching your customers. Just like in Canada, the main thing when you think about e-commerce it's to reach your customer and give them the maximum convenience when it's time for the delivery. And when we're talking about the delivery experience, we're talking about accessibility of the parcels. If they're not home during the day and you want to reach them, you want them to be able to go and pick up their parcels somewhere. Um, just like in Canada, where we have the largest uh, retail network, uh, China Post definitely have an extensive retail network with 220,000 postal station, including uh, 50,000 retail location and 40,000 e-lockers. Um, they've been investing a lot in their e-lockers where people can go 24 seven and access their parcel and also drop their parcels there. So it's a lot of convenience, it's easy for them. Uh, if you're not home, you can have access to your parcels. In terms of shipping, uh, what's important to consider is obviously, do you need a tracking information? Do you need a signature? What kind of coverage do you need? Is there any chance for damage for your product? Is it perishable? Um, so all uh, the minimum requirements. Do you need on-time delivery guarantee? So uh, what kind of transit time do you need? And um, obviously the signature upon uh, delivery. So consideration when you're going global in summary is, is there any restriction on your products? Is it prohibited? Uh, if any of you have question, uh, do not hesitate to reach out. I will be at the booth later and I can uh, find information for you if uh, you have any questions in regards to your products. Uh, where do you ship? Are you shipping in China? Are you shipping internationally? Where are your product going? The restriction and everything will differ based on the country. And which features do you require? So in terms of speed, tracking, coverage, signatory name. Uh, and again, just think about uh, the, all the um, restriction in regards to customs and duties. And if you have any questions again on the subject, it will be my pleasure to answer some more questions uh, during the rest of the day. It's been a real pleasure to be here today with you and have a good rest of the conference. Thank you very much, Janik. Thank you to teach us how to save the coast, how to save the time. Uh, after your presentation, I feel Canada and uh, China just uh, next door neighborhood. Uh